I tripped, I fell, this one came home with me. What can I say? Why, hello there. So, um, a lot going on today. I'm going to be wrapping my physical TBR to make myself read them because I have so many I, I need to actually read what I own. But it's so hard to pick and I feel like picking at random is going to make my life a lot easier. So we have a few things. We're going to start off with fantasy. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do, we'll probably change my mind. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap all the fantasy and keep all those. So I have, oh, I have two jars. If you've ever been to Slim Chickens, oops. If you've ever been to Slim Chickens and get their desserts, they give them to you in these mason jars. So I'm gonna have one jar for fantasy, one jar for romance. And I think I only have like a few young adult. So I think I'm just gonna throw them in with fantasy, but the romance is gonna be separate. Fantasy is gonna be over there. But this is like most of my, my fantasy books. And I'm gonna kind of jumble them up so they're not in the same order that they were on the shelf. And then I'm gonna wrap them and we're gonna chit chat and yeah. So, oh right. I got this, so <laughs> let's see how many this can get us. This is, I think like 150 feet. We'll find out together. Yes, I have on my spooky shirt. It's already spooky season, I don't care. I have my first little stack, one, two, three, four, five books here. First stack of five. And of course, have my throne of glass water bottle. So now we're gonna open this up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do fantasy in purple, romance in pink. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap them and then I'll number them afterwards. Like then I'll mix them up when I'm putting them on the shelf and then number them like that. So that way I don't know like, okay, I wrapped this one first. So it's number one. I hope that's making sense. This is quite the task. I think it's almost a hundred books. There's some books that I'm not wrapping because they're like book club picks or things like that. Let me see. And also if I have the series, I'm only going to wrap the first one in the series and then do it that way. I don't want to accidentally like pull book three in a series and then it's like, well, I don't know where books one and two are. That's the way I'm going to keep it kind of organized. That's what makes the most sense in my head. I'll probably change my mind 14 times from now until then. Let's, let's get to work. We got things to do. First book up, The Witch Collector. Leah's been telling me to read this and I know I should. It's just something about me personally. I'm a, I'm a huge mood reader and I feel like I'll start something and my, my bigger concern when I'm like my thought process when I'm reading something new is well what if the other books on my shelf are better than this one and I, I can't focus I just I can't that is so crooked we're not going to talk about that okay how am I going to wrap these like a Christmas present I don't want too much excess because whatever I cut off is what I'm going to use as like the one, two, three. Does that make sense? Probably not because I didn't, I didn't even explain myself. In my head, it makes sense. So I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I kind of, you see, I'm already getting distracted. What I kind of wanted to do was set them up like blind date with the books and then do it that way. But I feel like I'd be able to guess which one's which based off of that. So I will not be doing it that way. However, that would be a cute way to organize your TBR. Especially if you already know a lot about the books that you have. This is, this paper is quite sturdy. Also, the room that I'm in has no light, so I'm just using um, Mother Nature as my light today. So if the lighting fluctuates, blame it on her. 
Okay. Now that I think about it, I don't know which way is up. Like, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'm pretty sure it's, I think this is the spine over here. So that took me roughly five minutes to wrap this one, this one book. So I'm not gonna put you through the, the torture of having to watch me wrap every single one. However, I'll show you the books before I wrap them so you know what's on my fantasy and romance TBR. Then we have Feybound. I just bought this yesterday. I went to go pick up one book that I'd already paid for. Somehow walked out with this one. I tripped, I fell, this one came home with me. What can I say? What can I say? I mean, this one was described as, where was it? Romantic fantasy of epic proportions crackling with magic and passion. Can you blame me? Honestly, can you blame me? And I'll just show you the rest of the stack before I wrap them up. So then we have A Deadly Education. Um, I bought this one based off a TikTok video I saw like a year ago. I just saw it was like Harry Potter meets Wednesday. Sea of Ruin. I tried reading this. I wonder if my, no, my bookmark is not still in there. I tried reading this. Um, I know it's a why choose romance and it starts with the girls like 12 and I was like, whoa, why are we going back to when she's 12? That's when I stopped. So I also feel like this will be an opportunity for me to give some other books a second chance where like I started reading it and then moved on for whatever reason. But I mean, just a line from page 77 it says lord have mercy he excelled at torturing me okay maybe i'm back in the game but i also have this one and then the last one in this stack i think i said earlier i'm mixing my young adult with my fantasy because i don't have enough young adult to have its own tbr jar a good girl's guide to murder i bought this for my grandma which i need to tell her about the tv show actually i need to call her but um I bought this for my grandma. She loved it. So then I bought her books two and three and then she just gave them right back to me. She was like, oh, I read them. I love them here. You can have it. So she wants to know my thoughts on it. So I will read it for my little granny. So that's stack one. I will report back after these have been wrapped. I want to show you the next set of five. And I finished the first five. This is honestly so relaxing. It is so relaxing to just focus on on such like a mundane task of just like wrapping things and it's like I really like it I really like it so um these are the first five that I wrapped uh, I'm just keeping them kind of in stacks around and then I'm going to line them up on the shelf after I put the purple number on here and then make the little like these are the leftovers so I'm gonna cut them up make the little things you know the drill so first five done and I'm listening to an audiobook while I do it so it just kind of I feel very relaxed and like very at peace right now which is such a lovely feeling so I'm just I'm just happy I'm having a good time and I want you to I want you to experience that good time with me okay so those five are done next five first up a Dawn of Onyx. This was sent to me by Bailey for my birthday. Bailey, if you're watching, hi. Uh, thank you so much. I definitely wanna get to this one. I wanna get to all of these, but I've heard nothing but good things about this one. Then I have Three Dark Crowns, which is from what I've gathered a young adult fantasy. Apprentice to the Villain. Now I didn't, I didn't love Assistant to the Villain because I thought it was a standalone fantasy romance. It's all about expectations. Ooh. It's all about expectations. Honestly, did I buy this because of the sprayed edges? Yes, I did, because I have the original one in the sprayed edges. So, it was a good first book in the series. Like, Assistant to the Villain was a good first book in the series, but going into it thinking it's a standalone, no, not in love. 
the prison healer i was influenced by bailey again to get this one um her and maddie said it was really good so that's how i ended up with that and then serpent and dove this was supposed to be a book club that i was going to do with my cousins book club never happened none of us ever i don't think any of us read the book actually so those are the next five that i'm gonna wrap and who's back back again it's me these are the five that i just wrapped i'm having such a good time i'm probably not going to be saying that when i'm when i'm wrapping like book number 100 i'm having a good time now though these are the five that i just finished moving on to the next i think this is six one two three four five six yes this is a highly anticipated read for me uh why haven't i read it great question oh i know why the series isn't completed yet so i've just been kind of like oh i'll get to it when i get to it i bought this when i was like really deep into my i want retellings all the time phase it's a retelling of i don't remember what but all i know is it's a retelling house of bane of blood i bought this at a uh, steamy lit in deerfield i felt like they didn't have like a super big fantasy section but i was able to find this one uh i think i'm pretty sure i've only heard good things about that one sanctuary of the shadow let's be honest i bought it because of the sprayed edges yes you are correct um i don't really know anything about it other than kind of circusy vibes uh taste of poison this is a retelling i'm yes i'm like 99 percent sure this is a retelling um i bought this at midtown reader in tallahassee love that bookstore and then fable i honestly don't remember where i got this one from but i've heard i heard this is great and it was a reese's book club pick which is usually usually those are good next stack we have daughter of the pirate king again heard great things well actually i've heard mixed reviews up next jade city i got like i got eight chapters in and this is for a book club so i was trying to rush to read it and i think that's the reason that i couldn't really get into it because i felt like i had to read it and it wasn't like i just wasn't in the headspace for this one i think i'm gonna take out my should i keep that in there no i'll take it out savage lands uh bought this and then realized i think it was like a eight book series and then I was like, absolutely not. Then I read Throne of Glass, so I'm willing to put in the time if the series is good. Also heard mixed reviews. The North Wind. This is probably one of my more anticipated fantasy romance reads. Um, I think the West Wind is coming out soon. And I'm very excited for that because I need more in the series before I just start like jumping right in. Okay, I don't know if this is fantasy. I genuinely don't know, because this just says a tale of dark romance, and then the silver-eyed devil of Varen Moore, the dark god who played like it was both a blessing and a curse, her multifaceted enigmatic one-time lover, who knew the secrets of her soul, he found her. Again, don't know if this is fantasy or not. It's gonna get wrapped with the fantasy though. And then Emily Wiles' Encyclopedia of Fairies. I got this in Nashville, and I think this was one of the... Yeah, they put a stamp. Can you see that? Let's get to wrapping. I have about two hours left on this audiobook. Quite honestly, I'm just, I'm just trying to make it through. I want it to be done. It is a new day and we are continuing to wrap my TBR. However, I was bad yesterday and I bought a new book. But let me show you 
the next stack that I'm gonna wrap before I show you the book that I just bought. Okay, Once Upon a Broken Heart. I was waiting for the series to be completed. Now it is, so there's that. The Protector Guild, this is three books in here. Uh, they're each like 200 and something pages. It's a Why Choose um, fantasy adventure found family situation in here. My cousin bought this for me like two years ago for my birthday and I really need to read it. Kingdom of the Wicked. Um, I've heard so many mixed reviews and I think that's why it's still sitting on the shelf. The Inheritance Games. I bought this when this was super popular. Never got to it. A Touch of Ruin. I bought this immediately after finishing A Touch of Darkness because I was like, I need the next book. And then I started another book. Completely ignored this one. And then Glow. You see, the thing about Glow is I'm probably going to have to reread the entire series in order to read this one because I don't remember a single thing that happens. Not a single thing. I don't remember, I'd say, 90% of what happens in the books, so I would have to reread them to get to this one. That's why it's been sitting on the shelf. And I think the last one comes out sometime soon because I've seen PR packages going out for the new one. So, last night. I may or may not have gone to Target, and I went there for a Lego set. I did get a Lego set. We got the um, Hogwarts train. And, yeah. We got the Hogwarts train because we already have... We already have it at the Hogwarts castle. Okay. First thing that drew me to this book was the cover. So this is called The Game's God's Play, right? And then on the back it says she'll fight for her life for the God of Death. So we're getting a little Hades. Okay, okay. Then look at those sprayed edges. Can you get up in there? Not me. Focus on this. Look at those edges. Are you kidding? They're gorgeous. And at Target, 30% off. So basically from reading, oh, and, and, and look at this. Look at that. It's stunning. Okay, so then basically from reading the, um, basically from reading the synopsis, it's, the gods compete every year to basically see who's going to rule and they put mortals against each other. They each pick a mortal and put them against each other to fight for them. And from what I've gathered, I think she's basically, I don't want to say the wrong thing. From what I've gathered, she's an office clerk and she works in the city that Zeus is like in charge of. And then she's messing around with Hades and then Hades picks her as his mortal to play in the games and she doesn't know what part she plays in this larger scheme of things, which it just sounded so, so good. And <sighs> spread edges. But now I have to add it to the fantasy pile that I need to wrap. I wanna know what everybody else's physical TBR looks like because mine is over a hundred and I just keep buying more books, like a crazy person. But I just wanna know like, does the average person have like, you know, 30 books that they own and haven't read? Like what, what is the average? What's going on? Please, please share. I saw somebody commented that they had like 700 books that they own that they haven't read. That blew me away. 700's a lot, but nothing wrong with that. You got options when you got 700 books. about the way that I'm wrapping them and then putting them on the shelf that they're all basically going to be upside down but I guess it doesn't super matter it's just when I unwrap it they're all going to be upside down which is fine I'll live with it I also want to know what are like your most your most anticipated books on your TBR like what are you 
leaning towards re reading right now? What are you most excited to read? What's going on? Tell me all about it. Oh, I just read the back of that book really quick. This is um, what is this? A Touch of Ruin. And it says, I would burn this world for you. We love, we love a man like that in this house. We do, we do. I feel like I'm being a little too chatty almost. And I'm like, oh, well, I really should just like focus on wrapping. So then that way it's kind of like, just a cozy, like let's wrap together. But also like you and I were besties. So I'm wanting to, to chit chat with you. It's been a while. I don't know if you guys have been seeing all of the book talk drama lately. I just got back on TikTok, like I had it forever ago. And then I just stopped posting on there. But so I re-downloaded it and I just feel like every other post is about drama. It's this creator's doing this, this author's doing that. And it's like, when did this become a, you know, a space like this? I feel like I don't remember, like I don't remember TikTok, not TikTok, but I guess book talk specifically or the book community being that way. And I'm just like, I don't know if it's just like my timeline. Like, I don't know if it's just like the posts that I'm getting that are like that, or if everybody as a whole is experiencing that on Book Talk. But it just feels so crazy. And I just want to know if it's just me or what. Also, like, can we please just be nice to each other online? I don't understand why people choose to just be mean, especially, I feel like when you're online, you feel like you say things that you, there's no way you'd say that to that person's face. You feel like this level of comfort because, or security, I guess, because it's like, oh, well, they don't know who I am, but it's like, just, just be nice, you guys. Like, just be nice to each other. Come on. I feel like I'm getting good at this. Maybe it's just false false sense of confidence at this point but I feel like I'm getting better at this fun fact about me <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be sharing this fun fact with you but I used to really be into this is like in middle school making things out of duct tape you know you know the drill you you know the phase of life or maybe it was just maybe it was just me um but I was really into making stuff out of duct tape uh, <laughs> when I was in middle school and I was like making wallets and I was, I was really trying to start a side hustle. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be my source of income, duct tape wallets. As you can see, I haven't started my duct tape empire, so that never went anywhere. But, um, this is just kind of reminding me of that in a way, just because of all the folding and that kind of thing. And I also got into origami at one point, but uh, I only remember how to make one thing. I can make a little heart that has like a pocket in the back, which is really cute for like putting like a little gift back there. But other than that, I have no origami skills. I want to start a new audiobook. And I saw this girl on TikTok recommend Okay, I don't want to give you the wrong name. It's called Lights Out. Okay, let me go see the... It's a viral TikTok stalker dark romance. High heat, hilarious banter, and a love story like you'd never seen before. Can you handle the ride? Can I? Okay, wait. So they want someone with a soul as black as night, someone who would burn the world down for me and not lose a single minute of sleep over it. Okay, trauma nurse Allie doesn't need any more kinks. She likes the one she's landed on just fine. To her, nothing could top the masked men she follows online. Okay, I'm seeing where this is going. Unless one of those men was shirtless, heavily tattooed and waiting for her in her bedroom. 
She dreams about being hunted by one in particular of him chasing her down and doing deliciously dark things to her willing body. She never could have guessed that by sending one drunken text, those dreams would be would become her new reality. And then I think it switches to the guy's POV. It says, I want things most people don't, craving darkness and depravity instead of light and love. Josh Hammond has spent his life avoiding the limelight, but his online persona is another story. At night, he posts <laughs> masked thirst traps for his millions of fans to drool over, but one follower has caught his eye, Allie. After reading a comment begging him to break into her house wearing a mask, he decided to take her up on her offer. Together, Ali and Josh live out their darkest fantasies, unaware that Ali has captured their attention, the attention of someone else, someone with far more sinister intentions than a little light stalking. As Josh turns from predator to protector and the stakes heighten, he must ask himself how far he's willing to go for the woman he's obsessed with. Lights Out is a fast-paced, dark romance with a morally gray male lead. Some themes and scenes may be disturbing to readers. Please check the trigger warnings at the beginning of the book. Yeah, I'll be reading that. Mom, if you're watching, I would never read something so crazy. But yes, I will be reading that. Um, well, I'll be listening to it. Do you guys say when you're listening to an audiobook, do you say you're reading that book or that you're listening to that book? And this isn't the argument of is listening to an audiobook reading the book or not. Like, yes, you, you read the book. Like, if you listen to 20 audiobooks in the year, you read 20 books that year. But that's my opinion. But the question here is, do you say when someone asks like, oh, what are you reading? Do you say, oh, I'm reading whatever it is you're listening to? Or do you say, I'm listening to this on audio? Just curious. So you know I'm still thinking about that <laughs> that masked romance that I just told you about but I want to listen to just the trigger warnings just to see like what's up with it the thing is it's on Spotify so it's included if you have like the premium Spotify right but the only issue there is that the only issue there is I think, because I listened to a different audiobook last month, so I don't know when it resets. And I have a feeling I'm gonna get like two hours into the book, and then it's gonna be like, you're out of credits, you gotta wait till like the 20th of the month, which is so rude, but I could totally see that happening. So, however, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, well, I could. I could just listen to the trigger warnings and see if it's something that I'd even want to read. I'm going to do it. Here I am debating. I know I'm just going to do it. The question is, do I take you on that journey with me or do I just listen to them whenever I have a free minute? Are we about to move into the romance already? Already? That would be great. All right, so here is the newest stack but I felt like there were more, I felt like there were more fantasy books. Maybe there aren't. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing them randomly off the shelf to like kind of shuffle them up and then I'm gonna write. I think, so if this is the way that the spine is, I think I'm gonna write them all down here cause they're different heights. So down here, this will all be like the same. Yes. I'm gonna number all of these and then I'm going to make the little jar. All right, here we go, number one. Number one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put them down there. So I already kind of like, I'm 
jumbled them up getting them off the shelf, but even more so, I'm going to grab, I hope these are the right sides, but I'm going to grab from the piles differently as well. So that way, they're really mixed up and I really don't know which one's which. total of 35 fantasy slash young adult books on my TBR. So now is to make the TBR jar. Okay, so honestly, I don't know if I'm there right now. I don't know if I'm there right now for all of the stuff that they just listed in the trigger warnings. I might need something a little like fluffier than that. I just finished another like dark masked romance and that was a cowboy one, uh, Swallow Your Fear by Carly Brenna. I just finished that the other day, so I don't want to like I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. We'll see. We'll see if that's the one that I get into. But it's duet narration. So like the girl isn't doing the guy's voice, which I love. Back to what we came here for. I need to figure out how big I want the pieces of paper to be. I need 35 of them. You know what song is stuck in my head? We don't talk about Bruno from... Um, I'm gonna call it from Mirabelle from Encanto. I hope that's not backwards for you, but if it is, so sorry. And I'm just gonna tape this to the bottom so I know that this is the fantasy jar and I don't accidentally pick from a different, from the wrong jar. We have Brody and Matthew, historical cowboy romances. The thing is, I'm pretty sure these are like interconnected standalones. All of the books that I have that are by the same author are interconnected standalones. So I'm gonna just wrap them separately. And if I pull them out of order, just read them out of order. Then I have Romancing Miss Stone and uh, The Devil in Blue Jeans. Uh, these are from my 40 plus book haul thing, my birthday book haul, my mom got these for me. Next to you and Next of Kin. Um, I'm pretty sure these are standalones. You don't need to read them together. However, I'm very excited to read both of these. Then I have the next three books in the Bridgerton series. I have, I read book one and I liked it, but then I have the next three books. 90% sure these are interconnected standalone, so I don't have to read them in order. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Like, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. These are the last three books in the um, Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark. I read the first three, and you could have read them in any order. So I'm going to assume you can continue reading the rest in any order. And I bought these because I had the original cover before they changed them. They didn't change them much, but before they changed the covers... 
I had the first two. So I was like, I need to buy the rest of the series. That's how I ended up with these. Then these are, it's a trilogy of, these are, I'm pretty sure they're interconnected standalones. But it's called, okay, we got Highland Scoundrel, Highland Warrior, and Highland Outlaw. I got these, uh, my fiance bought these for me when we went to a used bookstore in Tallahassee. Then I have The Cowboy, The Texan, and The Loner, all by Joan Johnston. And I'm, again, I think these are interconnected standalones. You can read them in any order. I really hope so, because I'm about to wrap them all. These are definitely standalones. These are by Macy Yates, Cowboy Wild, Unbridled Cowboy, and The Rough Rider. This is book four. I'm missing book two, I think. It's like a cowboy um, Christmas book that I want, but I'm not gonna buy. Where am I? Then we have Only When It's Us and Always Only You. Um, this is the first one. And I bought it because I wanted the second one. I liked that the love interest had red hair like my love interest. Uh, my fiance has red hair, so I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I, I love to see it. And then um, this is the first one, so I bought this one because I was like, I need to read this one before this one. I don't know if that's true though. Then these were gifted to me by Simone. This is Offside and Shutout. She told me you can read them in whatever order. So I'll wrap them separately. And then the last three from the top shelf were You With A View, The X Vows, and then Not Another Love Song. I know all of them are separate. Like, I can read them all separately. So, time to get to wrapping. Still having a good time rapping. I picked an audiobook to listen to. I'm listening to. Please wait. Drum roll, please. It's called Pole Position by Rebecca Caffrey, and it's a Formula One Enemy to Lovers MM romance. I love to see it. It says, Get ready for the hottest Enemies to Lovers sports romance of 2024. That's a big claim. I'm only like two, three chapters in, so I got nothing to say about all that, but I'm excited to get into it. But I decided on that instead of Lights Out, just because I wasn't ready for all of those trigger warnings in Lights Out. So starting to work on the last shelf of all of my TBR. So I wanted to show you these, but I don't know if I ever said it. So I really think this is going to help me make my way through the books I already own. And I'm going to be on a very, very, very strict book buying ban. And you guys have to keep me accountable, but it's just like, I really, I really need to read the books I have because it's... It's a lot of books and I'm sure they're good books. I'm sure they're great books and I just want to give them the time that they deserve. I'm going to be doing a mini, um, little like mini series on my Instagram, my TikTok and probably my YouTube shorts of the books that I end up reading off of, like from pulling out of the jar, that kind of thing. It'll be a little mini series, but I just, I'm going to be on a very strict book buying ban. I'm going to try to be good. Will I be good? Mm, we'll see. We have a whole other shelf and I'm running out of paper. I think I'm gonna have to order another thing of paper. Crossing our fingers, we don't have to do that. So we have a not so meat cute. I'm about 60 or 70% into this. Uh, no, probably more like 40, 50% into this. 
I just ended up giving up on it. I don't know why. It just wasn't holding my attention. The stand-in. I got this um, on my five-day 23 bookstore crawl with my mom. Dishonestly Yours, I bought this at Books and Books in Coral Gables and I got it because it came with all these freebies. And it's a signed copy, which like, how can you say no to that? You can't. Wild Love, I also bought this at Books and Books, different day, but this is a signed copy of Wild Love. Still have yet to read it. This is one of my like most highly anticipated TBR reads. And the reason I haven't read it, TBR reads, why did I say it like that? The reason I haven't read it, because it's chunky. That's the only reason. It's on Kindle Unlimited by one of my absolute favorite authors, Single Dad and Nanny. Hello, does it get any better than that? But I just like, I think there's a third one coming out. And so I'm just not wanting to to say goodbye to the characters for now. But I thought this was going to be it. I thought it was just going to be a duology. So ugh, I love Lauren Asher. Excited to read that one. Love and Gelato. My brother um, bought this for me. I feel obligated to read it. And I will be reading it. And then unfortunately yours, Tessa Bailey. I think I took the, I had my other bookmark in here. But I started it, got like a chapter in, and then just moved on to something else because it wasn't what I was in the mood for. The rule I'm setting for myself is not only can I not buy more books, but I cannot open another book until I finish reading the one that I already have open. So we'll see how that goes. Moving on to the next, next stack. Let's see what we got. The seven year slip. Um, I'm scared to read this. That is all. Signed copy of Summer Romance. I've... I didn't hear anything about it before I bought it. I bought it because it was a signed copy. I got this in Charleston. I bought it because it was a signed copy. And um, then I started hearing good things about it after. So that's always a good thing. Chase Me by Tessa Bailey. I bought this because I wanted a really short read and then I never picked it up. A Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel. I'm really excited to read this one. I got this also on my birthday book trip with my mom. Grayson's Vow, I love Mia Sheridan. Hmm, let me maybe rephrase that a little bit. I really, really like Archer's voice and Travis. I have not read any other books by Mia Sheridan, so I was trying to branch out and read another book by her. I think this is, I think this is like a marriage of convenience, if I remember correctly. Spanish Love Deception, I bought this when it was super popular and then never got to it. Flock by Kate Stewart. I want to read this, but I've heard that it'll like the series as a whole will emotionally wreck you. That's never fun. Or is it? Uh, Something Wild and Wonderful. I also bought this on my trip to, um, I bought this one in Atlanta, actually. And then in the weeds, I've been wanting to read this one. I almost bought book four yesterday, but I didn't. I mean, I bought a different book instead, but I'm like, well, I haven't even read book two. Why would I be buying book four? So time to wrap those. Okay. I have officially wrapped all of the books on my physical TBR that I wanted to wrap. There are some that I didn't wrap, uh, like book club picks and stuff like that. This is how much is left. I'm so happy that I still had some left because in that way when I inevitably buy more books, I have this to wrap them in. So yeah, now they're all wrapped. I have the numbers on the fantasy ones. I need to still put numbers on the romance ones. So yes, now it's gonna look like this until I actually read those books. Yeah, so I'm just really excited about now having all of them wrapped and then that way I can make my way through it. Make sure that you're following me on Instagram, TikTok, and checking out my YouTube shorts. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can see as I read those books on the shelf. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I know I already said it, but I'm really excited to get through these books. And I feel like I'm, I really am just like, oh, I'm not in the mood for that. So I'm just going to pick something else. But now if it's like, I cannot pick something else until I read it, I will all of a sudden be in the mood for that. I'm just, I'm just looking forward to it, okay? Okay, thank you so much for joining me. And if you've watched this far, hi, hello, how are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time, bye.